Terrell. The mower's gonna be in the backyard. I just need you to pick it up and service it. This mower runs, right, Scruffy? Oh, she runs like a cheese champ. You ever read that, Rallies? I just love them little cheese champs. I can eat about five or six. Yeah, Rallies is all right, but I'm more of a checkers man myself. <laughs> checkers? You don't know good food, dude. But anyway, I should probably mention it's a little tricky getting that mower started. Uh, what do you mean by tricky? Oh, it will start. But there's a strict protocol that you must follow to a T in order to get it to fire. I'll leave a detailed note with the mower. All right, well, Junior's gonna be the one picking it up, so I'll just let him know. Again, make sure he follows it closely. Now, if you'll excuse me, all this rally talk has got me on the hunt for a bacon roadhouse for the side of them mozzarella sticks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shepherds. You don't know good food, dude. Yeah. It's this little notebook he's got here. Let's see what this entails. What? I thought this was a lawnmower, not the space shuttle. All right, turn key on one click, then pat yourself on the head three t Come on, is this guy for real? It's just gotta do it starting the mower. All right, what else we got in here? All right, uh, stand on one foot and gently rock mower back and forth while wiggling steering wheel, then try the key and see what happens. Nothing. All right, that didn't work. All right, I'm gonna call this knucklehead and see what's up. Scruffy here, what's the deal? Yeah, Scruffy? Yeah, this is Junior. I'm at your house, trying to get your mower going. Yeah, I followed your instructions and uh, still won't start. What? What? Oh, 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 all right, well, uh, did you follow those instructions exactly as written? Yeah, yeah, I did them. I did every little step that you had on there. I pat myself on the head three times. I stood on my foot. I did all that crap that had nothing to do with starting a mower. Still wouldn't start. You gotta follow it exactly as written. The panic builds up the static electricity. Come on, dude, I thought you knew about this stuff. Okay, well, I'll, I'll give it another shot. At one point here, uh, you go on about rallies for about four pages. What's that got to do with anything? Do I got to follow that too? You can ignore that part, unless you're hungry. Did you lift up and close the hood six times? I didn't get that far yet. I'll figure it out. Scruffy, lunch time. TJ brought rallies. Oh, sweet. Well, look, dude, I got to go. My big Buford's getting cold. But remember, follow it to a T. All right. Woo! Big beaver. Here's the problem right here. These two wires are barely touching. Yeah. Ah. All right, now let's see what happens. Sensation lawnmower with the four horse Briggs and Scratton on it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can put this newer modern plastic carburetor with the primer bulb, how you can put this carburetor on this older mower. And the only reason I'm showing you that is is because maybe you got one of these older mowers and say the carburetor is good but the gas tank is, is rotted out or rusty and you can't get that tank anymore and you're like man I hate to throw away this lawnmower it's a good mower I wish I could find a gas tank for it well you can put one of them on there 
Now this is that old auto choke carburetor that they used to make. And they're making it again, but it's just a different version. See how it's choked already? It's got that auto choke. Now this one, yeah, there it goes, it's starting to work. See? And sometimes these would be troublesome. Now, if you wanna see how to rebuild one of these carburetors, I have a video where I uh, got an old tiller running and it had one of these engines on it and we went and did the carburetor on that one. There's probably nothing wrong with this carburetor, but I just wanna show you how you can put one of them on here. So I went out in my junkyard and I pulled in this old junk mower that we keep for parts. Now, you can buy this carburetor and gas tank assembly online aftermarket pretty cheap. I don't know how good a quality it is because I've never used one, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna rebuild this old one. So there's just two bolts, one in the front, one on the side. You just take them out and give it a wiggle. Disconnect your, your throttle linkage, and we're not going to need that. And then we're going to take this over on the bench, and I'm going to take it apart, put a new diaphragm in it. We're going to install it on this lawnmower, see if it works. So I took the carburetor and cleaned it up. This primer bulb is real hard. So I'm gonna replace that. So here's the parts I got from our friends at Stens. This is the diaphragm kit, 520175. This is the primer bulb, 120178. This one doesn't have a hole in it. They do make one that's got a hole in it. You gotta use the exact one for your carburetor. And then I've got these tools, these Briggs and Scranton tools for installing, for removing and installing the primer bulb. And these pliers are part number 19461 and the installation tool is 19462. So this carburetor is real simple. Just take the screws out. Slippers did a video on if you have one of these carburetors and it's leaking between the tank and the, and the carburetor, he shows you a trick where you just double up. You just buy two of those diaphragm kits. Or, like I said, you can just go online and buy the whole tank and carburetor assembly, but again, I don't know what kind of quality. Maybe it's good. Maybe maybe it only lasts a year. I don't know. I'm a Briggs dealer. So I tend to get the Briggs parts. Except for these are aftermarket. From our friends at Stens. So there's their carburetor pickup tube. And this is your main jet tube. It's got that little sock on there, which there's some crap on there. That's your main jet. This is like your float bowl. There's crap in there. We're going to blow all that out. Now this little, this little nozzle pops out of there. You have to get from the inside and pop it out. And then here's the pliers for removing this. Stick it in there. Squeeze it.
pop that out of there. If you don't have the tool, you'll just have to use a screwdriver. Then you can take a long, thin screwdriver and you got to get on top of that nozzle. You can even pull the little butterfly out. Makes it easier. Grab that with a pair of pliers. Just remember when you go to stick it back in, this thing's got three little tabs on it. This goes in first, the one little tab. So this is how you reinstall it, this way. And we can pull this out. Then, I don't know if Mr. Cameraman can see that down in there. But there's your little nozzle, the little white thing up on top. See that little white tip sticking up? That's the nozzle, that's the head of the nozzle. And then, like I said, you take a screwdriver and you gotta push down hard to get a big enough screwdriver. You notice I'm working out of Junior's box. He got a bunch of crap for tools. There we go. See, and you can pop that out. There's little holes in there. So you're gonna wanna make sure that's clean. Then there's also a little black sleeve in here that may come out on you. See, it's like a little Venturi. So that's gotta be lined up when you go to put that nozzle back in. It's got a little notch on it. See that little notch? A little notch right there. So that little notch is going to go against the little pin that's in here. Right on the side. There's a little divot. You may not be able to see it in here, but you'll see it if you take your carburetor apart. So those are just little things you need to know when you're rebuilding one of these carburetors. So I'm gonna go ahead and blow that out, blow out all my jets and everything, and then we're gonna stick it back together. So I got it all clean, blew it all out. So find that notch, drop this back in. Make sure all your little holes and everything are all clean in your nozzle. And you can pop that back in until you hear it snap in. We'll put our throttle shaft back in. Oop, just like that. If I can quit flipping it around, put the butterfly back in. Like I said, it's got three little divots on it. You want to start with the one divot. You want the two divots facing you. So this is how you should be holding it with your pliers when you stick it back in. Find a little slot in there. Push it in until you hear it click in. And then check it. Make sure it's working. Open and closing like it should. Now we'll put our new primer in. Now, the original one was black. This one's red. The trick is to get it in this little collar and push the bulb down into there. Make sure it's all the way in there. And it wouldn't hurt to put a little lubrication on there. Let me get a little lubrication. Junior, got any lubrication on this bench of his? All right, I put a little little bit of lube on it. Line it up. Got those two little tabs there. Now again, if you don't have one of these tools, you're gonna have to use screwdrivers or maybe find a socket that'll fit in there. 
and then just push it down until you hear it click in. And then make sure it's lined up. Now this one got a little bit off center. There we go. So I had to slide it over a little. There we go. Make sure it locked in. Make sure those little tabs are centered in the in the cutout of the carpetrator. Now we have to put our little sock back on. And then get your new diaphragm out. Now, this is something to remember. Let me put this little bezel piece back on here too. This little dress up piece. Which way did that go on there? It looks like it just goes on any old way. There we go. Now we're ready to install our new gasket and diaphragm from our kit. Now, I don't care what carburetor you got, whether it's one of these carburetors, or if you got one of those little weed eater chainsaw carburetors that got the little diaphragms in it. If you get confused, always remember that this rubber gasket with the little flapper valves, because that's where your fuel pump, that's what pumps the fuel, that always goes on the machine surface. This is machine, just like on those other carburetors. Machine surfaced, and the gasket, that always goes on the carburetor. So remember that. It's a little handy little tip for you. All right, now we got a little spring poking up. So kind of grab it. Screws will help hold it in position. Put a couple screws in there, kind of hold it in place for you. And put the screws in. And just kind of get them, get them up against there. Because it is a plastic carburetor. And then go around and tighten them once you get it in a cross pattern. And then I always put some dinosaur juice in it before I put it back on the mower and pump that bulb to make sure that primer and everything is working because sometimes that little check valve in the Carburetor goes bad. Then you have no choice but to replace the carburetor. So there, it's all put back together. Easy peasy. So let me get some gas. Some dinosaur juice. This is the nectar of my relatives. Because this gas or this dinosaur juice is made from fossils. And I'm a pterodactyl. And this is made from my relative. I'm gonna steal the gas can off the sensation one. I'm a sensation. I'm a sensation. Remember that song by the Who? Now you're gonna pump it. And you should see gas squirt across. Got to pump it a bunch of times, see? You'll see a little stream of gas should shoot out of here if you got it done correctly. See the little squirt? All right. Now we're ready for installation. I'm a sensation. I'm a sensation. Remove this carburetor the same way. Take those two bolts off. Sometimes this one over here is 
on the on the newer mower. Sometimes it's three eighths, and this one's seven sixteenths. But you know, take that off. Looks like we got some grass built up around here. Another thing I do. Oh yeah, look, see. I always grab that intake tube to make sure it's not loose and look it's loose. So now I gotta pull off this blower shroud. And look, it's all nasty in there. All right, gonna have to blow that all off. Watch your eyes. I don't think this has been cleaned here since 1979. Oh, look. It's got that Magnetron kit. They used to have that kit that you could add. I think we did a video on that, adding one of those magnetrons to a coil. So at some point, they must have took it to a dealer or they bought it and put it on themselves. All right, so these are loose. These screws are loose. So we just gotta tighten them up. The gasket looks like it's still intact. I probably don't have a gasket for this old thing anyway. There's some more crap in there I want to blow out. Notice how this mower don't have any safeties on it. None of that bale blade stuff. All that stuff started around 81 I think. If I remember correctly. Because people are stupid. And they want to stick their hands underneath lawnmowers when there's a blade running. Not blade. Now our manifold tube is tight. I'll see if that link will fit in there. May have to open up the hole. No, it fits. And then I'm gonna rob the little elbow off the old one. Tommy? Oh, Tommy, can you hear me? All right, this tube is a little long. So we gotta trim a little bit off that tube. This tube just unscrews. Grab it, get it started, and you can unscrew it out of there. Maybe not. Off with the cover. I could have swore when I did these 40 years ago. Yeah, a little breather tube up. See, it fits. I just want you to just want to show you that it does fit. 
So we just gotta cut some off of this tube. Now we can't use that tube, I don't think. Because this tube just goes straight through. Where this tube's got that kink in it. Well, let's see. It looks like it might work. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah, this tube's gonna work. So it's probably better if you got a junk lawnmower, a new junk lawnmower to steal parts of them. But if you don't, just gonna have to cut some off at the end of that too. And this is the one off of that junk mower. It's a little more pliable. This one's old and hard. Looky there, looky there. Looky there. Looky there. Looky there. there. All right, now make sure there's something underneath it. Put it on start. Prime it three times. About four, five, give it enough. That's because my governor's spring was wrapped around here like this. So now I got it moved. Now, if I wanted to slow it down or speed it up, you would just bend on this. Because the more tension you put on the spring, the faster it's gonna go, the less tension, the slower it's gonna go. So let's start it again. Bend that a little. Run it a little fast. You see how it was kind of spinning? This thing got a bent crank there. looks like it's a new governor spring. Now I didn't start this thing before with the old carburetor, so I don't know. This might not even be the right spring. So since we got an old school mower, 
I'm gonna pull out my old school tachometer. This thing's called a surometer. It's made in Germany. You're probably wondering, well, how did you, how did you know that, Terrell? How, how does that stupid thing work? See how that thing, bing, bing, bing. So when you're turning this, you catch it on the camera, you turn this, and then when this thing gets to its widest point, when it's flinging back and forth, you keep adjusting it till you see it, the widest fan of it. And then you stop, and that's the RPM, 3200. Let's see how accurate this thing is. Let me get my digital one. within 50 RPM. That's what I'm talking about. So this mower should run at about 3,600, but 32 seems fast enough for me. And for the customer who owns it. And all I gotta do is put the air cleaner back on. So, that's all there is to converting, putting a newer, primer type carburetor on one of these old auto choke engines from the late 70s, early 80s, and you need to subscribe to this YouTube channel. That's what you need to do. And you need to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Come on. Come on, get behind me and follow me. And you need to go to our web store. You need to buy some Terrell apparel. And we got tools and other stuff there too. Z-Bender's been a big, a big uh, seller lately. Everyone loves the Z-Bender. And as always, wait for it, wait for it. Scruffy, we serviced it just like you wanted. I even went ahead and fixed that starting problem for free. So you probably won't need that notebook anymore. What? Undo what you did. What? But it works the right way now. The way it's supposed to work. That way you don't have to do all that goofy cat yourself on the head, shaking stuff, you know, all that crap. I don't like it. Undo what you did. But it's easier to start now. I don't even understand how it started before. Undo what you did, or I ain't paying. All right, all right, I'll put it back the way it was. All right, here you go. Back the way it was. All right, now pay up. All right, great. Thanks. All right, thanks. Call us if you need anything. Ugh. What a weirdo. Undo what you did.